I thought I would create a video. Uh, I guess this would be more geared towards those just starting out in Ertraline or uh, a beginner, and they're not quite sure, you know, uh, what they should, how can they start? Um, I guess that's what you would, <laughs> you would say this would be for. Um, so what I thought I would do, let me just start with that instead, is, is what, what I thought I was, my idea behind this, is that I'm thinking more along the lines of a person who doesn't really know how to draw, or they keep, you know, they, they've always told themselves, I don't know how to draw, um, but they have a desire to, to be creative, to draw, to, you know, dive into, into the world of art journaling, and just you know, having that ability to play around and, and do something, but they feel that, well, I don't know how to draw. I'm not really creative, so I can't do it. Um, I, I'm kind of doing this geared towards that person. So if you are that person, um, then please, yes, definitely this is for you. So keep watching um, and hopefully you will find this video helpful. I'm just going to use this journal. This is a journal I bought uh, just like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, at Michael's, I think it was like $5.99. So it's an inexpensive art journal that just has simple paper in it. Uh, it's not watercolor paper and uh, it's just blank paper. <coughs> I'm going to apologize right now if I have to keep coughing. I'm still getting over uh, a bad cold that I got last week. And uh, yeah, so uh, the coughing may start if I find it gets too much, I'll just pause the video. Um, but so this is just a simple sketch I had done yesterday. So this is where I'm gearing more towards is just simple sketching without worrying about having a perfect, you know, drawing. On my website last week, I made available a page, I think I titled it freebies, um, where I offer um, free downloads for you to use one of which was inspirational journal quotes and words and that sort of thing that you can print off, cut and paste into your journal. Another free download was this printout here. So it was just simple scribble sketching of flowers. If you wanted to start off there and you don't really know how to draw flowers, you can use this. You can, there's different ways you can use it. One of which is you can print it off, cut it out, and paste it into an art journal and then take it from there. Another one is you can cut, uh, print it off and trace it onto a journal page and use it as that. Um, you could also just directly trace on the sheet itself, uh, just going over and getting your hands familiar with the shapes and movement. I intentionally created this printout this way with scribble drawings uh, of flowers because I wanted to show that it doesn't have to be perfect. I have scribbly lines and multiples lines all, you know, overlapping each other. It's not perfect, but it's still perfectly fine for an art journal. You're not, your art journal is not to make, you know, to create uh, some, you know, the next great masterpiece. It doesn't have to be gallery worthy art. An art journal is like a normal journal when, or, you know, if you call them diaries, it's where you uh, express yourself, but in a creative way, in an art way, in a, in a, I don't, I don't even know if that way it makes sense, but I just said that, but you get the idea of what I mean. It's a way for you, uh, your creative soul, and everybody has one, to have a voice. And this is a safe space for you to use that voice and to express that creative voice. And the reason it's a safe space is because you don't have judgment on yourself. You don't sit there going, oh, that's not perfect. That didn't work out. It doesn't matter, okay? It's just like when you, if, you, if you're ever one that did art journal, I'm not art journaling, uh, journaling, writing, diary writing, um, you didn't worry about whether the spelling was perfect or the printing was, you know, your handwriting was, was you know, wonderful or pretty or, or whether your sentences made sense and, you know, it, it didn't matter. You didn't care. All Your whole purpose of writing in your journal was to just express about your day, your emotions, a period in your life, that sort of thing. The art journal is the same way. For a lot of us, a art journal is the same way. It's a way for you to pour your soul into it of how you're feeling. And you could use that with, with the subject matter you paint. You could use that in the form of colors. 
uh, anything, right? You can mix and match. You can mix with, with pictures and words. That's why I also have the printout available in the freebies page. But one simple way to start, we're going to use this. So, um, like I said, this is just a simple journal uh, book, our book that was there available, inexpensive. So in this one, for example, because I use watercolor, um, that will react very badly with normal paper. Okay, it will start bunching up and whatever when I start adding more and more color of watercolor. So what I tend to do is I tend to, I might put a couple of pieces of collage paper on it, just to add that other layer of, of paper on here. And another thing I do is I add some gesso. Okay, gesso you can get at any, like Michael's, any other art store. Um, you can get it at Walmart even. Don't worry, especially if you're starting out, of getting high quality gesso. Don't worry about getting Liquitex gesso or golden gesso or one of those really super expensive gessos. Do not worry about that when you are starting out. Worry about that later on if that's the way you want to go and want to get into more higher quality art supplies. Just get some inexpensive. It's just to start. So some prod, um, some brands, you can get it just so where it's in a tube or they have a small little tub of it. But just get yourself, uh, you can, you know, especially again, this is only when you're working with um, regular paper. If this was a book that had watercolor paper in it, I wouldn't have to do that because the wad, the paper quality, the type of paper, the medium is prepared and ready already to accept watercolor. So it's not going to start, you know, falling apart or anything like that. But my purpose of this video is to show you, don't let you not being able to draw stop you from diving into journaling art journaling, diving into being creative. Don't let that stop you. And it doesn't matter if you choose to do it in an art journal or not. Just don't let it stop you. One way to overcome the fear of, of um, being perfect and having things perfect is to use your non-dominant hand. So for example, for me, my non-dominant hand is my left hand. So draw a flower. You could use the printout I have as a reference if you wanted to. I could, you know, go, you could go over it just to kind of like, okay, she did that. She did that. I kept the lines very loose, very, you know, not perfect. So it's basically inviting you. Don't worry about being perfect. So use your non-dominant hand. Start with that. Start with the center of the flower. So there it is. I hope you can see that. Okay, maybe I'll use a black pencil. Okay, so I'm just going to go over. There we go. Nice and imperfect. Beautiful. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to do sort of this kind of style of flower. Okay, so now I'm just going to do the first petal. So I'm going to start over here and I'm just going to do some whatever, and I want it to be not perfectly shaped. There we go, okay? Next one, I can do this one a little bit wider. There we go. This one's gonna be a little bit thinner. And then this one. And then maybe one more, not so wide. There we go. And just some scribble in here. And then I'm gonna go over these lines again and just, just double line it. I don't mind doing that. You do that too. See, there we go. If you want to put a stem, just take it and there you go. Do leaves. Again, see, that's with the non-dominant hand. Nice and easy. It is easy. Why? Because I allowed myself to let it be imperfect. I didn't care about you know, perfect straight lines or anything like that. It doesn't matter. This is about you creating and giving yourself permission to just do something, to give yourself permission to, to say, yes, I can do art. Yes, I can draw. Um, now, in this case, like I was talking about, so 
my process, I'm going to continue on. So now that you've got your perfectly imperfect flower drawn in, and again, you could use any subject matter you want. You could draw whatever it is you want to give your hand at. But I'm just using the subject matter of a flower. So again, because this is not watercolor paper, and I know that watercolor or other water-soluble pencils and crayons and stuff is going to be the medium of choice that I'm going to use, I am going to want to go over this with some gesso. Now, ideally, I should have done that first before I drew the flower on but I'm fine with just going over it with gesso right now. And it's not gonna be a heavy layer. I'm just gonna dip some in my finger and just go over. And if I can't see the lines anymore, I'm okay with that because I can just draw it in again. So I'm just gonna do this. Now this has got some watercolors on it already. Uh, that was just leftover watercolor I had added uh, the other day when I had a leftover uh, color on my brush. So, okay. So I'm just gonna just do a little bit more here. Okay. Okay. Just gonna put the lid back on. All right, so now we've got that layer of gesso. And like I said, I kept it very thin, very loose. Now I'm gonna go in with, um, I think I'll use this one. This is a Stabilo All pencil. It is a water soluble pencil. You don't have to necessarily use Stabilo. You will find a lot of um, artists on, on YouTube and and other social media like Instagram and stuff mention Stabilo possibly a lot or Stabilo all uh, because it is a favorite with a lot of people. But again, you don't have to necessarily get Stabilo. You could use any other water activated or water reactive um, sort of pencil. A charcoal pencil will also do as well. I would actually, this is a charcoal. So I could actually use, this is a Stabilo, but it's more a charcoal pencil. So I'm just gonna, this is still a little damp, actually, I should probably, I'm gonna give this a quick blast of heat and then I'll come back. Okay, so we're back, or I'm back. And um, like I said, I'm gonna use my charcoal. So I'm just going to just do whatever. And then I'm just gonna redraw the petals. Uh, okay. And then just had a stem and some leaves. Okay, so now we're gonna get my water brush. And I'm just going to, you don't have to use a watercolor brush, you could use any other brush. It's just to go over the lines. And you see it kind of reacting a bit. Okay, I'm going to go back. Okay, and my water brush again. And this part really is just playing around. Allow yourself to play. Allow yourself to make mistakes. Allow yourself to try new things and see what happens. And if you make a mistake, and a mistake meaning not that you did something wrong, but you didn't quite get the results you wanted, or, oh, I didn't quite like that, that didn't, wait, you know, whatever. That's, that's fine. Don't have, doesn't mean you rip out the page or anything like that. Continue to work with it. Try to push your way through it um, is what I always try to do. Now I'm going to go in and get my Stabilo. Uh, is that it? No, that's not it. Which where? There it is. Okay, so now we're going to get in this and I'm just going to... All right. There we go. Now you'll see that the Stabilo does react a bit more than the charcoal, but again, 
it's good to try different tools like charcoal versus the Stabilo All to see, you know, <coughs> excuse me, what kind of effect it will give you. And you'd allow yourself to not be afraid to try different tools, pencil versus, you know, your average black pencil versus um, a charcoal pencil versus um, a, what did I call it? A Stabilo All. Um, when you allow yourself to try different things, and and play around with it then you see how they react to certain things how each one reacts to water or doesn't react to water how you know which ones that you like the effect of and not like the effect of you know that sort of thing and you start to build a, a mental list of things that you like and you don't like with when it comes to art see here i'm just trying with the pencil or uh, the pen sorry and because the gesso wasn't 100% dry in this, it's just scratching off the black. And again, it's all about, but does that mean it's wrong? No, because I'm looking at it going, okay, that gave a different effect. I actually don't mind that. Okay, so now what am I going to do? I'm going to keep going in with this. So I'm going to go back with my black pencil. And I'm gonna continue on with this. Uh, let's see here. Okay, now because again, I'm working with regular paper in this book and it's already getting overworked. So even though I added some gesso earlier, it was a thin layer, so I'm just gonna hit this with another layer of gesso using a small brush. But also I wanted to bring in some white anyway. So I'm just gonna do that. And I'm not worried about how this is looking at this point. This is literally just playing around, working with what I have. And with what I have in this book is average paper that I have to work with so that I can use watercolor and other water soluble um, art supplies. So that's what I have to work with in this journal. So I'm just showing you my process of going through that. I could have also just started adding collage over it instead and then doing a thick layer of gesso. You could do that, but I don't didn't want to do that in this case. I just kind of wanted to keep adding layers. And for me, that's what art is all about. It's not just one set of lines of drawing, one set of color, and that's it. I, I find that very, for my personal preference, I find that very creates very flat looking art. So I prefer adding layers. Layers create more dimension. Layers create more depth, more emotion, more meaning into, into a drawing. Even when you're doing it for fun, Again, my personal preference, that's just what I prefer doing. So now that I've added some gesso to that, I'm going to hit it with a blast of heat for my heat gun, and then I'll pick up again where I left off. Okay, so the page is dry. Now I'm going to go in with my Stabilo, and I'm just going to go over the lines. Very loose. Okay, and I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to go over those lines again to activate it. All right, I'm just going to do that too. All right, there we go. Now, I'm going to bring in some watercolor. So, I'm just going to get my pencils out of the way a little bit here. Now, there's different ways if you're going the route of uh, watercolor. You could use the watercolor um, pans, okay? You could use um, water-soluble crayons. Uh, these are Stabilo Woodies. So these are other forms of water-soluble. 
You could also use a watercolor in tube form. They have it like that as well. So it's up to you how you choose to go in. Or you don't have to use watercolor at all. You could use acrylic. You could use a Crayola crayon. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Use what you have, it it you know, and play around with it. So I'm gonna use a little bit of uh this watercolor because it's the color I want. And this is not the way you're supposed to use it, but I'm doing it this way anyway. And that's a little bit more than gonna actually you know what I like that I'm gonna leave that okay I'm letting it flow All right, so I'm going to blast it with heat again. I really love the way that looks. Do you see that? I'm happy with that. But I'm gonna blast it with the heat gun and uh, take it from there. called I don't even remember what these are called and they're so um written like mucked up on the label but they are water reactive let's try it out that not doing as good of a job as they normally do but it's because they're the paper quality Okay, so because of the paper quality now, uh, you will find that sometimes, and again, I recommend putting gesso on your paper to try to avoid this, but when you don't have gesso uh, and you just draw lines with a water soluble and then you do that, it the lines will still stay there, which I hate. I don't like that. Now, another way to combat that is just to take your water brush or whatever brush you're using and go over it like that and then you can just do that okay so which is what I did there now I'm going to do this again and now I'm going to take this and I'm going to tap my brush and add those lovely little flex because I love that okay there we go that is really good I'm happy with that now the leaves here I didn't really do too much. I'm just gonna go into my water palette here and just add a little. And I'm gonna hit that more with 
Okay, and then I think I'll get my Stabilo. And yeah, I'm just gonna. Okay. Okay, so. Now I'm taking a black pen, just your normal black pen, and I'm going over some of the lines just to add a little bit of scribbles. That's personal choice if you want to do that or not. It's up to you. Okay. I like that. Now this page got all mucked up because of the result of this page, and that's fine. I could do whatever I want with that another time. But there we go. Now you could also take a little brush if you wanted to add little bits of white and I'm just, you could use white paint or I'm just use gesso and you could just add little bits. It's all about playing around. Plus you do this often enough, you start to learn what you like, what you don't like little techniques of your own that you do, you start to create that inner toolbox of things that you like. So we have that. And then later on, this is all wet again. I don't want to turn the uh, my heat gun on. But um, what you could do is um, you could get a gel pen if you wanted to add and just, I've done that too, where I've just scribbled on some words over top. Um, yesterday I did that. Like here's a, an example, I just scribbled some words on top and did some journal writing. Um, there was another one I did yesterday. There's another this one here. I just took my jelly roll pen that looks like this. There's an idea of what one looks like. It's literally called jelly roll. And you could just do some writing right over top or somewhere on there. It's, it's again, it's personal choice. It's up to you if you want to do that. And you can keep going and add some more scribble lines. It really is up to you and how um, how much you want to have this go like that. But there we go. Nice and simple. That's my whole point is that don't use the excuse that you don't know how to draw as a reason not to do art journaling. Art journaling doesn't even have to be about drawing something. It could be about just putting colors on paper. It could be about collaging images and everything on paper. It could be about uh, anything. You could collage anything it, it or, or do anything you want. It's your art journal. The only limitation is you in, in what you're wanting to do in it. But if you're wanting to do a drawing and the only thing that's stopping you is you saying that you can't do it, I hope this video showed you that yes, you can. It's just you saying that you can't that's stopping you. Don't let that stop you. Use your non-dominant hand and allow whatever your non-dominant hand does, that's what you use, that's what you go with. And just keep working with it. Work with what you have. If what you have is a scribbled on warpy looking flower, then use it. Go into my website, uh, thepaintedwitchstudio.com. Print off the freebie here and use that as your starting point if you want to. Or go on Google and Google line drawings of whatever. If you like butterflies, do Google line drawings of butterflies and print that off or whatever else, uh, other subject matter that you like and use that um, as your starting point. Whatever it is that you want to do and go from there. And again, try with your non-dominant hand so you're not overthinking it and you're not trying to create perfect art. 
Anyway, thank you so much. I hope that was helpful to you. I hope you got something out of it. I do apologize once again for my um, voice and the coughing and all that other fun stuff, but I didn't want my cold to stop me from um, sharing on video with you. Like I, I, I love doing these videos and I love sharing what I know with you and hoping, you know, as artists or even creative souls, you know, we like to, you know, you want to inspire others. And I love inspiring other people to be creative and tap into their own creative soul and, and, you know, show up in their own art journals, let, letting their voice, their creative voice show up. So um, thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. Take care.